Hello, I'm Jamila Musaeva, an international social etiquette consultant and the author of the book Etiquette, the least you need to know. Since holidays are right around the corner, today's video is dedicated to the art of gift giving. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the historical background of gift giving. I'm going to look at some general etiquette rules about gift giving and gift receiving. As well, we're going to look at some taboos related to gift giving in certain cultures and some general interesting gift ideas. So make sure you stay tuned until the end of this video and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Gift giving is one of the oldest human activities that takes its root back before the civilization were even born. Cavemen used to give each other gifts in the form of animal tooth or stones. The tradition of giving gifts on the birthday actually takes its root back to ancient Egypt. It was a little bit different then, uh, on the day of the coronation, so when a pharaoh was given his throne, he was giving certain gifts in forms of jewelry. This wasn't really the actual birthday, but rather the coronation day because ancient Egyptians believed that Pharaoh was reborn into God, so it was an important celebration that was marked with giving gifts. The tradition of lighting up candles and giving gifts were initiated by ancient Greeks, who believed that on the person's birthday, he was more likely to get haunted by evil spirits, so gifts and candles would protect them from evil spirits. The biggest gift in the history of humankind was gifted by France to the US and that is the Statue of Liberty to commemorate the 100th Independence Day of US. The most expensive gift in the history of humankind is the Taj Mahal that was gifted by Shah Emperor Jahan to his beautiful wife Mumtaz Mahal. The world-renowned tradition of giving gifts on Christmas has very little to do with the religious ceremony itself, although the story was taken when the biblical Maggie was giving gifts to baby Jesus. However, this association of Christmas with red wrapping paper, eggnog, Christmas tree, lights, all of that really came about in the 19th century with the advent of industrialization and when the goods became mass-produced. In 20th century, it was really when this idea of gift giving became so much more commercialized and today we cannot imagine ourselves going by with a holiday without exchanging gifts. Generally speaking, the etiquette of gift giving is a very culturally sensitive topic. That means every culture has its very specific rules, maybe superstitions or traditions around gift giving. But I would go even further to say that gift giving is even person specific. So a person might be from the same country as you are, but they might have their own ideas about it, about gift receiving so you have to take into account their interests and their personal superstitions around it. For example, let's say I'll use the example of my own culture. In Azerbaijan we have this idea that gifting shoes as a gift can bring a bad luck or maybe can destroy a relationship between the giver and the receiver. But your friend might be from Azerbaijan and a huge shoe addict and he would say, you know what, I love receiving shoes as, as gifts and I love uh, collecting them. In that case, the interest of the person will come above the tradition or the superstition of that specific culture. This rule applies when you know the receiver personally. However, if you don't have any personal relationship with a person, the only thing you know is their country of origin, then use their country of origin as your decisive factor in getting the gift. For example, you have a guest arriving from Saudi Arabia, you don't know anything about them, you don't know their background, education, you just know they're coming from Saudi Arabia. You might necessarily look at, for example, what are some cultural taboos around gift giving in Saudi Arabia. One might be you will never give anything that has alcohol content in it, so a bottle of wine or chocolates with some liquor in it is a big taboo. So when you buy a box of chocolate for your guests from Saudi Arabia, make sure to check for the alcohol content. Use your common sense to decide on the nature of the gift. If you know the receiver personally, then think about their personal interests, look into what they like, what are some things that they have been looking at, or maybe what are some things they've been talking about, and use that to make the judgment about what should you give them as a gift. If you don't know the receiver personally, then use some general knowledge or some general gift ideas that I'm going to be sharing with you shortly. So here are the examples of general gift ideas that you can take and be more or less safe. That is a scented candle, flowers in a vase, 
a box of chocolate, check for the alcohol content or some nuts or any kind of allergies that the receiver might have, so you might want to stay away from those options. A book, a good collection for the table, for the coffee table, some stationary item like a beautiful pen or maybe a leather notebook. Those are some general gifts that are more or less safe for all different kind of cultures. So if you ask me what are some gifts that I can give to my family and friends, in that case you can always ask them what would you like to give for that holiday or maybe birthday and feel free to use their uh, suggestions in buying the gift. You don't have to feel like you have to buy what they have asked for but if especially if it's above your budget or maybe you didn't think of that or it's difficult to find uh, and it might take a while for the gift to arrive you might then play around that idea and kind of choose a gift that will suit that. Um, sort of area of interest. If you are buying a gift for someone that you don't know personally but you really want to make sure that this is a gift that they're going to be put into good use, you can use their social media to help yourself get some ideas. Maybe you see a pattern there, maybe they are using scented candle every time in a picture, or maybe they are drinking coffee in a certain mug, or maybe they're drinking matcha latte, whatever that might be, use that to think what are some gifts that you can buy them and they're going to put it into a good use. A lot of people ask me, is it okay to give money as a gift? And my answer will be, it's only acceptable if that's your family member or a close friend of yours. In all other cases, please stay away from giving money as a gift. What you could do is you could buy a gift card, which is money sum on a card that they can go and use in a specific product or for a specific service. For example, a coworker of yours loves reading and you know that. So instead of going and picking a certain book because you might know if they have it or if they don't, so the safer bet would be to buy a gift card to Barnes & Noble or your local bookstore and then that person can go to that bookstore and buy a gift for himself. Or for example, you have a friend who is not super close to you but you're in a good terms and they have mentioned that they really enjoy getting massaged and for some reason it's out of their budget this month. So perhaps a good holiday gift would be a gift card to a spa or a massage treatment. Since my channel is all about etiquette, I also wanted to address some of the general etiquette taboos regarding gift giving in specific cultures. I already mentioned that in the Middle East you wouldn't give alcohol containing gifts, so a bottle of wine or liquor or liquor containing chocolate would be a taboo. In China, a watch or a clock would be considered a taboo, in Brazil that would be a brooch, and in France that would be a chrysanthemum, especially for festive occasions, you would never buy it for that. So be aware of different cultural taboos around gift giving and consider the culture where your receiver is coming from and be mindful, use your personal judgment when buying the gift. Now let's take a seat and talk about some general etiquette rules regarding the giving of the gift as well as receiving the gift. Rule number one, the gift is not about you, it's about the receiver. I know a lot of us feel tempted to buy something that we personally like. For example, let's say I really like small jewelry, small accessories, but say I'm shopping for my friend that I know likes very bold accessories, so big chunky necklaces. And when shopping, I think, oh, I'm not really huge of this chunky necklace, let me get her something small because I personally like it. That's a huge mistake. When buying a gift, opt for something that your receiver will prefer. Don't use your own sense of style, use their sense of style to buy the gift for them. Rule number two, when buying a gift for someone who's outside your family circle or your close group of friends, make sure that the gift is not too personal or too intimate. And by that I mean anything that's applied directly on a body. That could be a body lotion as well as a perfume. A lot of people love buying perfume, but perfume is actually a very intimate item and should not be bought for someone who's not very close to you. So stay away from perfume and opt for a scented candle, for example. Along with that, actually, jewelry is also considered to be an intimate gift because the jewelry touches our body immediately. So things like that, as well as an underwear or maybe pajama or a pair of shoes is something that you would buy only for someone who's close to you. Rule number three is do not buy a gift that's way above your budget or way above the budget of the receiver. 
obvious reasons we understand why you wouldn't buy something that's above your budget because then you wouldn't really actually enjoy the process it will put so much strain on you economically mentally emotionally uh, so make sure that you buy something that's within your budget but also within the budget of the receiver and that's because when you buy something super expensive for the receiver they feel like they need to reciprocate you put that pressure on them that if you bought something expensive when they buy you a gift they have to buy something equally as expensive really because at the end of the day it's not about the price tag of a gift it's about the value of your attention and the time that you took in order to prepare that gift rule number four if you are buying something for a kid then make sure to consult the parent first perhaps the kid is not allowed to eat chocolates or maybe he's not allowed to have toys as in a form of gift parent would prefer you to buy books say or maybe items of clothing then you would consult the parent first before buying the gift rule number five is a gift should not be a hint to something unless it has been mentioned by the receiver for example, if, if you see the person has extra weight, getting him a recipe book for healthy diet or maybe getting him subscription for a gym might not be a good gift. They might think that you're hinting on something and you are hinting that they need to lose weight. However, if a friend of yours, for example, has mentioned that they want to go on a diet and they don't know where to start or maybe they really want to get in the gym but they can't get subscription because maybe it's out of their budget for that month, then in that case only you can get them the gift that they want. For example, your friend has also mentioned that he would like to improve his public speaking skills, then you can get a gift subscription to a course for public speaking. But generally, unless it's not mentioned directly by the receiver, do not buy any gifts that are meant for self-development. Rule number six, always, always include a gift receipt. Without a price tag on it, of course, it has to be a raise and that's what's meant by the gift receipt because in case the person needs to change the size or maybe the color or maybe they have that exact item that you bought them and maybe they'll get something else, no matter what it is, you have to include it for their convenience. Rule number seven is big question when it comes to the gift giving and that is whether to wrap or not. I would say when in doubt, make sure that to wrap. Of course, this is something that you will have to take into account, you know, the receiver's standpoint on perhaps going paperless and reducing the amount of paper that's being used. In that case, you'd respect their desire and perhaps not wrap. But in most cases, I would say wrap it. Personally, I love the ceremony of wrapping gifts. I do it on my own, especially for my family and close friends. I also like reusing newspapers and magazines. I cut out the paper, put it all together and use it as a wrapping paper. I love that little personal touch to it really, but if for any other occasion, if I don't know the person uh, that close, then I would opt for professional services. I would get the wrapping paper that would match the gender and the age perhaps of the receiver, making sure that it's appropriate for them and I will get it beautifully wrapped because after all, the act of receiving gift is not only about the gift, but it's about the anticipation of, of what it is that is inside that wrapping paper and really unwrapping it and the whole unpackaging is what makes it beautiful. So if you are in doubt, make sure you wrap the gift and present it in the most beautiful way possible. Rule number eight is include a name tag or perhaps a handwritten note that simply says congratulations, very happy for you or happy holidays and sign off with your name. This will make it easier for the receiver when he or she is unwrapping their presents and knows exactly what was your gift. Especially when this is a huge celebration and the giver with the receiver really doesn't have much time to take notes on who gave what. So when they open your present, they know that it comes from you. It saves their time and it adds a little bit of a beautiful touch to the gift itself. So we've covered all the general etiquette rules regarding the gift giving, but now let's talk about some general etiquette rules regarding receiving gifts. The most important etiquette rule of receiving the gift is showing appreciation. Receiving the gift if you're receiving in person with both hands, smiling genuinely and saying thank you. If you receive the gift by mail, then you should give a call to the gifter on the day that the mail has arrived to just say thank you, I've received the gift 
and then write a handwritten thank you note and send it by mail to the giver. When you receive the gift and there is a little letter in it, a little handwritten note in it, then before opening and looking what is inside that box, first open the card, read the card to yourself, say thank you to the person that have gifted the card, say for example, Sam, thank you for those words, I truly appreciate them, and then take your time to unwrap the gift and then thank again for the gift as well. If you're unwrapping a gift in front of everyone else and there is a handwritten card in it, then first take the card out, say who the card is from. So in this example, you would say, this card is from Sam. Then you take some time to yourself to read it, don't read it out loud. And then you turn to Sam and you say, thank you Sam for such kind words, I truly appreciate them. And then you unwrap the gift. Once you have unwrapped it, then you turn again to Sam and say, Sam, thank you for this gift. It's truly beautiful that you thought of me when buying this gift or whatever kind words you have to say to Sam. The formula for thanking someone for a gift is the name of a giver, so whoever gave you the gift. Then you would say, what is it that they gave you? So the item itself or maybe a service or whatever it might be. And then you would say something nice about the gift and the giver. And then finally, you will say thank you. But make sure that you're actually genuine about it. For example, using the example of Sam and the sunglasses, I, let's say, really like the color. They're black. That's something that I wear often, but they're not really my style. Then I could compliment him on paying attention to the fact that I really like wearing black and I love the color. That way, I'll be honest, I'll be true, genuine, but also show my appreciation for the gift that he bought. If there's genuinely nothing that you can find good about the gift, you don't like the color, the style, the shape, whatnot, you really don't like the gift, then find something nice to say about the giver. But try to make sure that you're actually genuine about it and you truly mean it. To show this in an example using again Sam and sunglasses, I would say, Sam, thank you for the sunglasses. It's really so attentive of you to notice or remember that I've mentioned once that I love collecting sunglasses. Thank you a lot for the gift. So I didn't have anything nice to say about the gift itself, but I truly found something nice to say about the giver. As the receiver of the gift, you're actually in charge of thanking the person for buying that specific item to you. You have to remember who gave what in order to then be able to actually show your appreciation for the gift. And my recommendation for that is take sticky notes with you on the day of your celebration or maybe if you're busy greeting the guests, you can ask someone, a friend of yours, to actually keep track of those gifts. Maybe add a sticky note inside the bag writing who the gift came from. So when you're then unwrapping the gifts, you will know exactly what to thank the giver for. In that moment, as a receiver, you'll truly appreciate those who have added their own maybe handwritten note or a tag saying congratulations and signing off their name. You'll find that you truly appreciate those that do that because it saves you time remembering who gave what. There's a huge dilemma when it comes to the right moment to unwrap the gift, where the receiver sometimes is not sure is it okay to unwrap it in front of the giver or maybe you should wait and open it in person. If you're in a small group of friends, you can clarify it, you can ask, do you guys want me to open the gifts? And you will know if there's at least one person who doesn't want it, then keep it and do it privately. In US, it's actually customary to open the gifts in front of everyone, whereas in Asia, in South America, it's actually better to open it in private. So be mindful of the cultural differences as well. When there's only two of you, so the receiver being you and the giver, you can always ask the giver, is it okay if I unwrap the gift? Do you want me to open it right now? And he might say, for example, please do open it. I want to see your reaction. Or he might say, you know what? I would prefer you to open it in private. You have to be mindful and you have to take into account their desire. And large etiquette question a lot of people are asking me is what are some occasions when I need to give a gift? Uh, some are more obvious like holidays, birthdays, celebrations of certain uh, memorable days or occasions. That's a must. But also when you're invited to someone's home, especially when you're invited for the first time make sure that you never go empty-handed. Again, from the list that I've mentioned before, flowers in a vase, a scented candle, a box of chocolate might always be a good idea. 
but also you have to have a larger part of your gift could be maybe a frame or something for home or maybe some beautiful you know collection stature whatever that might be or mug or anything that they might use at home for the day when you're going you can send in the flowers or bring the scented candles once you've visited their home and seen the decoration and the style of their home, you will know exactly what you need to get to match that style. So the second part of the gift will come once you've visited the house. So in a day after, you can send a handwritten note and a second part of your big gift to celebrate their housewarming party or maybe, you know, your first visit to their house. To end this video, I wanted to say that the art of gift giving is not about keeping scores. It's not about who bought the most expensive gift, who bought the most extravagant gift, who outdid whom. It's really about the value of your time and the care that you've put into the gift. So the time you spend researching what you should get, the time you spend actually going out and finding the right product, wrapping it, handwriting a note, it's really about the time and care that the giver has put into giving the gift. Some of my favorite gifts are scented candles. I love anything related to candles, aromatherapy. I love receiving gifts in forms of stationery. I love collecting beautiful notebooks, beautiful pens. Um, those of you that know that I am into calligraphy, if you don't, then check out the video I'll put in the description box about me starting to do calligraphy. I love beautiful collection books. So it's really about paying attention. It's really about knowing what the receiver would probably like to receive and taking the time to actually get that product and deliver it beautifully to the receiver. Thank you very much for watching this video until the very end and happy holidays. I'll see you in my next video. Take care until then. Bye!